Hello, this is Victor at RestoreMercedes.com. This video is for Harry in New York and Rockland. And this is going to be a long one because I kind of want to go over the vehicle, see, to show what's going on here and what I see personally. Well, first off, Harry, we got good news is that it runs fine now. We have no ABS, we have no ASR, and stuff like that. AC is running. I have a little list there. A roof works now, as we see the roof, so it activates, got the roof going, like you remember before, it wasn't working, now it is, actually latches pretty well, so that's the roof situation, I'm gonna keep it open because it's quite hot out, so, so as you can see, Roof is good. Okay, just keep it open. Now, ABS ASR is gone. Here's our idle speed. Rock steady on the idle. Acceleration is on point. We're good in this department. Now, computer reads now I can see the readouts and all that good stuff uh, I tightened up mass airflow sensor boot because it was all loose so there was definitely air passing through that's bad so I did that so the lower harness seemed to be patched up I see somebody did some patch up work here but if it works it works let it be <clears throat> fan clutch works but I have problems with electric fans those do not come on that's bad because your AC is over pressurizing and the uh, pressure is too high plus it's auxiliary coolant if uh, the fan clutch fails. Oh, they came on, thank God. Jesus Christ. You know that the car has been running for like two hours. It's the first time I'm hearing them coming on. I don't like that, that it was like kind of late. Maybe you have low coolant in the AC system and therefore the pressure isn't building. Maybe that, no, I don't know, maybe I'll hook up the gauges. Oh, okay, great, I mean, I love that because that is kind of a problem to figure out the whole circuit. So that's great, they did come on. All right, so that's that one thing off the list. Um, what else? Well, these things were like kind of like that, I don't know, the wires are good, but they're like, like this. Now the base module in there, the one that I had to work on, um, I soldered it, I put it back together, um, and it works, so we'll leave it. That's okay. Um, car does not overheat. That's great. I put down the kick down, put back kick down cable. So let that be. In terms of the engine, what I don't like is I hear a little noise on this side. It's like upper guides, maybe inner guide. I don't know, but the sound, it, feels, it sounds like a little bit of a chain kind of slap. That's not the greatest sound. So I'll have to figure that out, maybe take the cover off to inspect it. But it has to be done obviously on a cold engine because you disconnect fuel lines and all of that fuel can go into the exhaust and on hot exhaust, hot engine, that's bad. So it has to be done when it's, when it's actually cold. Right. So for now, for the engine, I think we're okay. It's actually uh, not too bad. The engine mounts seem to be half live, so we still have some left. A little bit of a misfire, maybe caps and rotors have to be checked out. I'll take a look at them. Slight miss, just very slight, but it's there. Um, readouts, so let's take a look. See, this is, um, I don't know if camera picks it up, but this is the actual values from your engine. So throttle is in one degree, 1.4. RPMs are on point. And with AC running, that's where they are. 650 plus minus 50, I believe. Uh, injection timing, mass airflow, voltage, everything goes through. Now we got our coolant temperature at 92, so sensors read. That's also a good thing. And duty cycle changes as well. As we can see, duty cycle 46. Oxygen sensor is kind of on the lower end, but there might be a little bit of a vacuum leak. You see, it kind of like doesn't hover it's kind of likes to stay in the lower range but again 
temperature, probably a little vacuum leak here and there. But the good news is that the computer can still pull it off to be around 50, which is great. So it adapts. It's another computer adapts to these. Self-adaptation passed and uh, regeneration valve. And let's see if that one clicks. It's on now. Uh, let's see if I can, I don't know, we'll put these bolts in here. These are for the border. Oh uh, gosh, okay, well let's see. Uh, the valve, buddy, come on. It's like, it's in there and, and, and I don't, it's, it's, it's over there under the cover, but it works. It clicks, okay, I feel it clicking, but obviously, See this holes for the regeneration valve right here, that vacuum holes. So I, maybe once I take this off, I'll, I'll feel it on the other side. But even through cover, I feel it pulsate. That's good, so it's not stuck. That's a common, common thing on these cars to fail. So readings, I'm pretty much okay with them. Uh, fuel safety shut off is off, so we got none of that stuff. And computer reception is there, so that's good. Uh, another thing, maybe I can check uh, the altitude pressure, 1020, that's good. And I want to see all the camps are off, the retards off, okay. And where is this? Hold on a second. Idle speed, idle speed recognition is there. Neutral safety switch is okay, but bushings are bad. Oh, this one. Air intake temperature sensor works as well. So. In terms of, um, you know, in terms of electrics, it feels to be good. I think I'm just fine. Now, the only thing that I do not kind of like is, you see, this coolant fans, they did come on, but they don't cycle. Now, there you go. So every time I don't hear them, I kind of get worried because the AC seemed to be working well. Look at all this water. So the AC seemed to be okay, but for some reason, fans... They didn't like to come on. All right, well, anyway, I'm testing it like that. Just let the AC run because it brings up the pressure up high and whatever. Air pump works. I checked that out. Nothing I'm using there. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you is the suspension. Suspension came with few codes, but again, all codes are cleared. And um, I will have to kind of just drive it a little bit and check for coats once more so that way I'm going to get the latest ones because I had the code for temperature sensor on the engine although as you saw yourself sensor reads fine so suspension no codes now what I want to show you is the we gotta see damper valves so they come on right so the valves are on and now I should be able to push on suspension. And you can see, like, I can compress it up and down. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you see how much it moves now. So let's go on the other side, do the same thing here. See, I can compress the suspension. So you know that accumulators on these two work. Now the rear, just hold my camera here like that you can see I can push suspension like about two inches but not on this side this one I can't do it it's like barely moving barely moving so this one this accumulator is bad so what happens is when you drive it's like car goes over bump but the rear sort of just jumps a little more than the front and I just had that done on one of my cells too because it was doing that thing it was super annoying I had both rears the rear accumulators blown so I go over the bump the front goes nice and the rear goes like boom and it keeps jumping it was like terrible I hated it and um, you have to hold on to the steering wheel too so that is that uh, the what else airbag situation Look at the airbag situation. My prediction with the airbag module is, see first of all, the module reads everything. See checkbox means good. 
That's pass. That's pass. These are all pass. Come on, focus, please. What happened with my focus? It's very sunny day today, so I'm trying to do my best here. All right, so to check boxes means pass. Come on, focus. Uh, okay, pass. And these are off because the belt buckles are not in. But what we have a problem is this code. Control module itself. And if you clear it, control module faults cannot be erased. That's the reason for the uh, SRS light, that yellow light that's on the dash, because no other lights are on right now. Um, so that makes me think that maybe, like you said, your father driving it triggered the module to somehow bug out, or maybe airbags came out at some point, and or maybe battery was swapped on the like like swapped out positive to negative. Or something along those lines that actually made module fail because we see all the readings but module itself so but um, it shouldn't be a big problem to be honest I I bought one of these modules I also had the same problem with my 91 500 SL and I just swapped it out with the used one it was not expensive at all though as long as the module didn't have didn't come from the accident car so there will be no nothing um, stored in that module uh, right so that's that so let's take a look at my list now I kind of made a little list here just for what I see it's quite large mirror switch right so the in t the mirror switch is not from this vehicle it's the wrong one because it's probably from e-class or it's from the later SL because what happens here is I'll show you in a second just want to open the door I like working outside there's so much so much room so bear with me here oh this thing is broken door check see the door I that I haven't seen just now I saw it so the door is just swinging the good news is it's not broken so the door swings out all the way but it doesn't stop in its position so that is to be replaced because because this handle is also kind of like not right as you can see it's slapping too much so the panel has to come out anyway so might as well do that right so the switch for the mirrors is supposed to have the center position like this it does not have it Okay, so it does not have it. It just keeps keeps going to two positions only, and that's not correct. Not correct. Pull cool my phone down. It's so hot out. Uh, in terms of RPM, so you can see the RPMs just pulling my phone down. Um, the this one moves. The seat seat doesn't move because. I believe there's a problem with the control module under the seat because the relay clicks, but it does not want to work. Now, the ignition switch, that is to be dealt with one way or the other. So like, I don't know what's with these airbags. I mean, airbags read, but for some reason, I don't know what happened there. Why the SSRS module is bad. Let me go on the other side. I'll see also. See the chrome cover here is there. This is supposed to actually go under the panel. The panel has to go under it and clips and stuff. Uh, that clip is there, but this 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 thing this thing has to go over. Bolts missing here. Bolts missing here. There's a little cover that's missing here. It's not crucial, but all these little details. That's what makes the whole car. See over here, it's missing the chrome cover. The screws are there cover is not here it's wrong bolts on the lock I don't know what's up with that it's not they're not they're not the right bolts what I wanted to show you with the ignition switch is this when the keys out and the lights are not on there's no reason for that noise to come it's supposed to be quiet so what I noticed is there's supposed to be a little door over here 
I play around with this. Come on. I can get it go away. It's like... You see, it's kind of like makes that contact there. You see, I can make it go away because that little door that's supposed to cover the keyhole, it's probably broke and it's probably pushed all the way down in. Therefore, the buzzer is always on when you open the door, even if the key is not in. So it's supposed to just tell you when the key is in, just remove the key and take it with you. But in this case, it just keeps buzzing, 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 and that's it. I wanna keep running the AC. Now, suspension light comes on and off, traction light comes on and off, roll bar works, no problems there. Right, that is that. The door lights, the bulbs are probably gone. See, this one, this door check works right. You can close the door halfway and it remains in this position. So it's not um, just like halfway open and stops. And all the way, it stops. The door check on that side does not do such a thing. So that door check is bad. The trunk situation. Oh, yes, I'm sorry to say. The door lock is like messed up, you know that, I can't, the key doesn't work in there. It spins freely, that's not good. Now, the trunk, it appears that this light was replaced, it looks new to me, which is great because these are rare. Uh, and the shots for the trunk seem to be replaced because trunk stays up in the, in the up position, so it's not, it doesn't fall down, so it's good. But the door lock and pump, I have a big problem with that, it, it still works. But the problem is there is there are leaks in the system somewhere um it's just like i know there's a leak on the fuel filler cap because that thing you can clearly hear hissing when car is locked and unlocked and that is there and um the rest is the inside the car some actuators inside the car are leaking because when it switches over to the inside <coughs> <coughs> excuse me when it switches over to the inside there are, um, I can, you know, it doesn't deactivate, so that's, that's that. And the trims around here is missing, and um, that stuff. Okay, so again, going back to the door check, you see it's like, it's not, it kind of wants to, but it's definitely broken. So, let's go down the list real quick. And I have my phone sitting here, cooling down. So, let's see. I already spoke about the mirror switch. Let's take a look at the list this here. The mirror switch, SRS module can be cleared. Driver's door lock, yes. Passenger in, in their door handle. Accumulator shifter bushing. Oh yeah, shifter bushings. Common thing when you shift the gears, you can hear them clunk. The lock works, that's good. So um, you can hear them clunking under the car. So um, that is to be that is to be done because you don't want this car to roll. Um, I did hear some clunking on the front suspension, like there is a, a little clunk there when I turn the wheel. And um, timing chain guides, auxiliary fans. I think I can take out some suspensions. Headlight switch, right? Uh, headlight switch <coughs> is loose. Like you can feel it's like when you turn the headlights on and off, it's like it's loose, you know? So you can't, it's like, it's bad. It has to be done because sometimes they short out and catch fire. I seen the harness that actually was caught fire. And uh, driver's seat, uh, rear up function, that, door lights, yeah. So far, that's all I see. A little trim pieces I'm not going for for now. This is, this is, this is, you know, this I don't like regardless because I can hear some clicking in there. That could be another reason why you lock and unlock the car with the, with the working lock. Then it goes like the light stays on permanently. So that, I don't know that, but again, once you go through trims, there's many, many little trim pieces that can be dealt with, but first, the vital things that's that's that is something to deal with first and then go through trims later so 
these things on my list I have to prioritize them get get the ones that are more important versus le less important things and then I will move on but like I said the car runs good exhaust it's kind of steady I mean I don't hear immediate like RPM fluctuations so it's okay has a little miss but that's that's not much see that's that's my concern you see the temperature is creeping up with the uh, with the air conditioner being on so I don't like that it's like you know there might be a, there might be a possibility that maybe speed one on fans don't work but to me that's speed one that's okay it looks like it's speed one and then there's speed two which is higher speed well I'll deal with it later as long as they come on that's all I care for because that's that's great and then we have all the electronics working properly see now they came on twice so the pressure is rising they come on maybe there is a little low freon in the AC system that could be all so they don't cycle as often as I would want them to cycle because on my car they cycle way more often than this like right now they would have been on by now like a second day off two seconds they're off they come back on when you drive they stay on permanently but minus v12 is a little different it's, the, the engine runs hotter so right so that's all that okay so this was a very very long video but uh like i said just wanted to go through the car and that's why it was long uh and basically we figure out what else I mean, what sequence we're doing all these repairs, what's more important, what's not as important, and take it from there. All right, so for now, this is all. This is Victor at RestoreYourMercedes.com. Thank you for watching.